Hi, my name is Greg Addy, and I work with HMI, which is Hartwig Mechanical Incorporated out of Harvard, Illinois. Today I'm doing a really quick video, so pay attention, <laughs> on um, the water softening system that we carry for not only our commercial people, but our residential uh, people in the area. Uh, if you need help from us in this area of water treatment, please give us a call. You'll probably see our phone number on the software here as we go along. But again, just a real quick video uh, to show you what we offer, how to take it apart, how to work on it. Um, so about 20 minutes of your time here and you are going to be knowing everything I know about this. Okay? Okay, so let's go. This is called a uh, CLAC Corporation WS1 control valve. And this control valve uh, basically goes up to one inch in size, so it can flow one inch full flow through it, up to 18 gallons a minute. It comes, the water comes in on the right, out on the left product water or soft water, and it has a bypass, which is two red little handles here. When it's in the service position, these little handles will be pointing in and out or if something happens where uh, there's a leak or your brine tanks are overflowing, just point them towards each other like that and the water will stop to this device. Uh, but for this purpose, we're going to leave them in the bypass and um, we're going to depressurize this guy real quick. You'll hear a room. So, what I just did there, if you ever want to recycle this guy right now, just push and hold him for three seconds, it'll take off just like that. If you ever wanted to recycle it tonight, you just push it once and release it. Okay? Once and release or hold. So, on the WS1 control valve, um, basically, um, if there's a problem, I always tell everybody, always take them apart because they're so simple to take apart. Okay? So, if we want to take this control valve apart, all we do is there's a tab on each side of this that you can just take, set the cover to the side. You've got three wires. And basically, they made this for guys like me, okay? Because you've got a wire with two prongs, two prongs, a wire with four prongs, four prongs, and the meter wire with three prongs. So when we go to put this back together, I mean, there's just no way to mess up on this thing, okay? So three, four, power wire, and your motor. And then you just take this right here, and you want to treat this like the diamond or your wedding ring in carefulness, and set him off to the side so we don't damage him or get him wet. Then you got your middle module on these and these little wires here, which is your meter and your power wire. And I just tuck them over the top here for a minute. Then you have two little tabs here. This is called your middle module, okay? You take these two little tabs, lift up, just pulls right away from it. Pretty simple so far, isn't it? And we'll set him off to the side so we don't damage anything. And now, this is called um, where the piston goes in and out, your drive cap. Now, because I regenerated it, I've made sure that there's no pressure in it. But just to make sure, kind of spin this guy around. And what you're doing is you're taking the piston for you, you guys in the field so you don't take a bath, all right? And if you want, if you're in an environment that say has carpet underneath of you, or um, you have a, where you just can't get water on the floor, um, all the new caps now have no plug here. It's just one solid piece. So in this case, water could get out here but just take this, your salt tank cap, and put it over like this, okay? That'll catch your water and so on. In this case, we have a special wrench for these. You 
can use a channel lock on these, even though I don't suggest it. If you're going to be working on these uh, more often than not, get a wrench. 15 bucks. I mean, you'll be glad you did. So, the next thing we want to do is put our wrench in place. Give it a couple turns. Enough so it gets, you can kind of hear the water. And we release the vacuum in it, which tells me probably the piston's good in it. And then you unscrew this. You pull him out. See that little bit of water? Okay. And this right here is called a seal stack. This is what your piston rides through, and all those little seals in there will create a vacuum effect when this goes into different cycles. Because all this is doing is, as it moves, it moves the piston in, or it moves the piston back. Okay? So for the purpose of this video, we got the seal stack out, pretty simple, and again, Clack thought, Let's make this for guys like Greg Daddy, all right? They made it so this clips right out like this. This is called your regenerate piston, right there. And this will slide actually into the end of this as it goes through and allows it to draw salt solution out of your salt tank. And then this guy is your main drive piston. We call it the WS1 piston. And again, it just unclips. Okay, you can see the little clip inside there, how this clips in and out. So at this point, you've got it apart. That was hard, wasn't it? Um, and when you look at it, you just want to take your finger and go to each seal and see if it's nice and smooth. If you feel any rigidness at all, like sandpaper, replace the seal stack because that will mean that it is not going to get a good seal on this piston um, and you're going to overfill your brine tank or get water to the drain. Also, uh, look at your piston and right on the second uh, landing here, if it's damaged, you're going to have grooves in it. And some are real fine, some can be real deep, but I've seen rocks, I've seen you name it, uh, salt bag particles and everything else go through these things. So examine it. If it looks good, reuse it. They're pretty durable. So at this point, we got that. And while you got it at this point, you can also you can check what's called your injector. Okay, that's behind here. And after I get it apart, we'll, I'll show you just how quick this goes back together. This right here is where your injector is. So just for giggles here, we're going to take our salt brine line flow control out. And we're going to put this, you can either use this, or you can use this end to get this cap. Now I like putting it over like this. Just give it one little crank like that. Set your wrench down. Again, you can use a channel locks, but you got to be careful. Make sure there's no pressure in there. This will come undone like this. This right here has a little screen in it. This will catch garbage from your well or city water and just take him and go wash him out. Uh, if you, you want to be able to see up into the light and see through it, and if it looks good, just place it right back in the cap, okay? Now, down in the cavity here, you'll see two plugs. This is just a plug if we were going to, what's called, and not to get into it, for upflow brining, or the salt to flow up the bed instead of down, this is called the downflow brining system. And so we put it in the right hand side, different color little injectors. To get that injector out, just take your cap, which is normally like this, and pretend you're going to have a cup of tea, okay? And take that cup. And with the very edge of the rim, put it down in there like that and just scoop. 
and this little red guy pops right out. Now many a man has tried to, to uh, take this out with a needle nose and I have sold many a part because of it because you will crush this thing in a minute. On these, just give them a little blow, hold it up to the light and you should be able to see right through them. If you can, that means that it's clear and you can put it right back in like that. Then you can take your cover with your screen, put him right back in. Come on now, there we go. And he just goes right back on like this, okay? Now, when you're working on your software, you may notice that it's just never using any salt, okay? So over on my, this side, over here, this is called a meter assembly, right here. And this will, if I got strong enough hands, this little cap will just come right off. Just take him and maybe set him in the tray. And now I'm not usually carrying a big knife, but I do carry a little knife with me for stuff just like this, okay? And either take a flathead screwdriver and put it in this little slot. If this is in the way, just pull this red clip out, kind of lift him up, get him over a little bit. So you can get at this little slot right here above, okay? And take him and boom I just took him put my knife in there and I just kind of went like this now what you'll see here is this is a little impeller and as it turns like this every 20 times it turns around it will measure one gallon of water okay it should be loose enough that it'll turn just like this if it sticks replace the meter okay all right so this goes back in like this you put your cap back on these are all good to go you put your knife away so you don't cut yourself like me you put your drain back on which just pushes down I want to show you this real quick on your drain on the bottom depending on what softener you have. This is called a drain line flow control, DLFC. And there's a little button in here. Make sure you got the right button for the right softener if you're a technician out there. Otherwise you will overlift the bed and you'll have resin all over the house, okay? So your OEM will put the correct button in there, but that'll come right out. If you ever need to clean it, it just fits back in like that and right this goes just right back in like this you take your clip and these clips I found are actually pretty durable compared to some of them out there this is your brine line with the brine line flow control in it with that little button at a half a gallon a minute you put him back on you take your little clip Clip him back in, he's done, okay? Then you come back to the front of your machine, you take your seal stack, and we'll just pretend this is in perfect shape and no damage is done. You just slide him back in, take your thumb, and as far as it'll go back. Then take your drive cap assembly, like this. And remember, there's no, you can't do this wrong, okay? I'm gonna try to do it wrong, but it just snaps back on like that, your piston, and then your regenerate piston just snaps right back in like this. And then take your drive and just kind of bring it, not all the way extended out, but back a little bit. I want you to notice this guy right here. This is a magnet right here. And this is what that little program board when we first took off will pick up and it'll tell the controller what position to put this piston in at different times for so many spins it'll put it in different positions by reading that little magnet okay so this just goes back in like this 
Yeah, twist them back on, like so. Take your wrench again. Try to hold it out here. Otherwise, you catch your fingers on these clips. And I've got some pretty good scares on my fingers from doing a short grab on these guys. Just snug. Once you get them snug, you take your middle module again, like this, and you'll see there's two little feet down here. So you got feet here and a place to put their shoes on. And so you put them right back in their shoes. You take your gray wire here, make sure that he's tucked under here, and that this black wire, there's a little harness right here that that has to go into, or else you will not hear that. And you'll have to figure it out more with the wires, okay? So we've got that back in. We've got our program board here again. And while we're at this point, before we put the program board over water, uh, let's just take him, and let's get rid of our water, put him back in the salt tank, a good place for him. Now you got room to work on the last part of this. So your program board, you'll notice on here uh, that there's two little holes in the bottom here, one here and one here. And on the valve, there's a post here. And if you kind of put him up to that post, you'll see that he slides perfectly on there. And then just take your finger, kind of lift him up a little bit, snap. Okay? Now, when you put your wires back on, and for you who out there who are a little more safety conscious than old Greg here, who takes risks in life and shunt, uh, you can unplug your unit first and plug it in after the fact here. But this power wire here is still live, okay? But the order of putting these back in is your motor first, two, so it's like counting two, three, four, okay? And then you go three on your meter, and right here, the board's gonna figure out again what the heck it's doing, all right? So you take it like that, you plug them in, and now the board is going to reboot the whole, the whole control box. Okay. Okay. Now, we take our cover, we put it back in. Okay, so once you get it booted back in and you want to reset your clock, just push set, set clock, and whatever time it is, let's just say it's uh, 1.30 p.m. You push this once, that'll light up. You got your one. You push it again, that starts blinking, and you can set it to wherever you want it with your up and down arrows, okay? Usually, um, the homeowner, this is something that they would do. Now you who are installing, the installer's program is simply take your next and your up arrow, hold them together, and your hardness will come up. Very important what you put in there, okay? So we've got 35 grains of hardness here. That's where we'll leave it. If we wanted to change it, you can see we can change how hard the water is. Determining hardness is you take a water test before you even start this process and see how hard your incoming water is. Another story for another time, okay? So, uh, after that, you push next. This valve also features every four, up to 28 days, you can tell it to regenerate on its own, plus it will meter the water and regenerate whatever comes first. Next is the time it regenerates. This is set for 2 a.m. and you can set that for whatever time you want. You push next, next, and you're back to your time. Okay? Now, you who are um, in the field and you're a technician, there's another part called the OEM program that you take your next, not next up, but next down and hold them. 
this is how we program it. You see it says set softening. So we're telling this control valve, you're going to be a softener, we can also tell it you're going to be a filter. But for our purposes, we want to tell it it's a softener. So you get to um, uh, tell it whatever you want to do. About the only thing you're going to be able to do there, out there, is uh, in life. And you push next. We got this set as a post-fill unit. It can also be a pre-fill the salt tank unit. Okay? But for what we put out in our in our industry, Hartwig likes post-fill units. Okay? Uh, then we got what's called Program 10. All of our residential softeners are going to be at this program. And I won't go into other programs because it doesn't matter at this point. And it would only create confusion. We push next. This is the capacity unit. It's set up by the OEM. Just leave it there. Okay. Next, how much salt? Again, set up by the OEM. Just leave it there. Okay. We're at 12 pounds. We're telling them to be an automatic unit, so it automatically counts the gallons. And you're done on the programmers. Now, lastly, if you are having a lot of problems and you just, man, what is going on with this thing? You can take the next, your up arrow and your down arrow, hold them, and what you're going to get is this softener's life story right in your hands. It's going to tell you the last time it regenerated. It's saying zero because we just sent it through a regeneration. But it might say 20 on there, which is a red flag then, because why did it only regenerate in the last 20 days? Something's going on. So it's an investigative uh, tool. You push next, it'll tell you how many gallons it's gone through since the last regeneration. Of course, zero because we just rebuilt it. It'll tell you how many gallons A134 is it's built in 134 gallons as a what's called a reserve capacity so you don't run out of soft water. Then you push that again and it'll say today I've used 110 gallons of water. Okay? You push it again, it'll tell you how many gallons per minute are running through the pipe right now. Of course, no one's flushing a toilet here at Hartwig, so it's not reading anything. Next, it will tell you, since the last regeneration, how many max gallons per minute flowed through the unit. Okay? That's important to know that if it's reading too low or way too high, that there's probably something going on in the distribution system that you need to pay attention to. You push next, it will tell you how many gallons has gone through this guy since the day it was put in. This one's gone through 169,000 gallons, okay? But better yet, it'll tell you how many days ago it was installed for that uh, person out there that might tell you, well, it was just installed two years ago. Um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner and Mr. Installer, this is uh, the reason that you put this in there so the installer can really know how old it is, because it's important but it's also a lot of times we just forget when we put things in houses so this will tell us really how old it is it'll tell us how many times it went through a regeneration since it was installed this one is 208 times and it'll take you right back to your time of day and that is everything in the WS1 CLAC CS uh, control board if you have questions on what you've seen today, be sure to call us at Hartwig down here. we got our little sticker down here, and you'll see our phone number. And probably a guy like me is going to answer the phone, and whatever questions you have, Hartwig is always available to answer uh, whatever questions you have about this control valve, maybe some off-brand control valve. We're here to serve you. And so give us that call. And... Uh, and uh, you have a nice day. Thank you.